in last month's video, right up here, I mentioned that I'd switched my mesh Wi-Fi networking setup from Eero to Google Wi-Fi. In this relatively short video this month, I'm going to do a comparison, pros and cons between the two. Now, both systems are deservedly very popular, so there's lots of good in-depth reviews out there. Um, but not too many people were foolish enough to spend a lot of money to get both systems. So I think I can give a, a, good, a pretty good comparison of the pros and cons of each. Um, now, I did a re early review of the Eero system up here. So let's start this video with a recap of what the Google Wi-Fi setup looks like. So I have three of these round Google Wi-Fi pods. This one's in the corner of the kitchen. Sir, he and the Happy Buddha serves the backyard. The second one is over in the office. This one connects up to the cable modem. And the third one is down there by the TV services the rest of the house. They feature this kind of futuristic like Cylon LED which you can turn off if you're concerned about the Cylon overlords taking over. They have two Ethernet ports. Uh, one you connect up to your cable modem and the other one you can use for local Ethernet devices. On the remote uh, pods you can connect up both Ethernet ports to local Ethernet devices. Uh, they sell for $300 for a pack of three and uh, $125 if you want additional ones. And they run about four and a half watts. So I'll do a quick walkthrough of the Android app. Uh, this is the status screen. It shows you your status and your latest upload tests. It does automatic updates and lets you know when and what happened. Over here you have your setup screens. You can do manual network checks change your password, do more advanced networking things uh, like um, port forwarding. Uh, you can also um, create additional users so you can have a manager uh, versus a, uh, you can set up guest accounts and do parental controls. This is the most interesting tab. This shows the status of all the devices. Um, this is the internet um, status which includes uh, speed. This would be for each of the last 30 days. It shows fairly consistent uh, cable modem type speeds of 60 down and 5 up. And this is usage. It shows uh, how much, uh, how many gigabytes we've downloaded uh, every day in total and how many we've uploaded. Um, we get the, on this node will show the three access points and their status. Interesting that it labels the power, the connection is fair to these nodes that I have. They're relatively close. The living room one in particular over by the TV is line of sight 30 feet. And it's listed only as fair, but I've had no troubles with um, streaming um, HD uh, quality 4K content uh, to them. Here it'll list all the devices um, and I have a bunch. <laughs> Uh, it's sorted by uh, usage. So you can see on my main laptop, um, uh, the, again, the usage charts of downloads and uploads. Also has, um, you can do port, uh, reserve a port, uh, and you can do, this little guy over here gives you priority um, assignment where you can pick a particular device and give it priority for X number of hours over all the other devices. Finally, this is a little table that shows uh, the Wi-Fi strengths I have to various Raspberry Pis I have scattered around the house and outside. This is the numbers I got from the Google Wi-Fi setup, and this is the numbers I had from the Eero setup. So they're relatively, southwest of Birmingham Zoo. Re relatively similar. I guess the Eero is probably a little bit stronger uh, downstairs than it was uh, the Google Wi-Fi, but... Um, Reliability, strength-wise, they seem similar. Okay, time to wrap it up with the pros and cons. As I mentioned last month, the big advantage to this guy is he does multi-room Chromecast streaming better. That's the main reason I switched. This is a little inconsistent. This guy's rock solid. Another reason that I switched is this guy does not support something called loopback. That's a 
feature of routers that allow you to use the same IP address that you would on the road with your phone, for example, to get inside your house through your internet provider, your external IP address, to be able to use that inside your home as well. With this guy, you have to use two different addresses. Uh, internal IP address when you're in the home, external when you're out of the home. With Loopback, which is supported by default on this guy, Google Wi-Fi, you can use the same external IP address in either case. For a home full of Internet of Things, that's sometimes useful, like if you have an IP camera and you want to uh, stream it to your phone through your home router. Big disadvantage to this guy, they thought they were going to support it, but I finally gave up waiting supported out of the box here. In terms of cost, three of these Google Wi-Fi's are $300, three of these are $400, you get one of these for $125, you get one of these for $190. It's a little more expensive. Now here's another disadvantage to the Eero. Although it has two Ethernet ports, when you're using this guy as a remote node, you can only use one of them for local Ethernet devices. Whereas in the Google Wi-Fi, you can use both of these ports. Um, the, the second one you can use to uh, hardwire these together, or you need the second one for your cable modem, but you can't use them for local Ethernet devices. In terms of support, both of these companies offer free 1-800 numbers. I didn't have an excuse to try it out with Google, but I did try it with the Eero when lightning struck and destroyed one of my boxes. The call was pleasant and efficient, and they shipped a new box uh, within a few days. So what would be really sweet is if Google Home, that vertical speaker I showed last month, had this built in. There are rumors out there, it's kind of an obvious thing to conjecture, but it doesn't exist now, but guy can dream. Scatter the Google Home speakers throughout the house and not only get the house able to speak to you, but you can speak to the house and the Wi-Fi gets stronger the more you add maybe someday. Okay, well, if you've been keeping a tally, this guy, at least in my book, is a pretty clear winner. More advantages than disadvantages. Um, your mileage may vary. Every house is different. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. That'll be it for this month. Hopefully we'll see you next month.